Hi, this is Thomas Oldroyd, Senior Director of Marketing with InsideSales.com. We're very pleased to welcome John Doerr, Co-President of the Rain Group. John's experience and consulting approach have allowed him to grow professional service firms through innovative and sustainable marketing and sales programs. His goal is to have Rain Group and RainToday.com become the world leader in sales excellence for service firms. Here at the Sales Acceleration Summit this year, we're asking John to teach us how to make it rain. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. For those of us in sales who've been doing this for years, and even those of us who have just started out, we face a dilemma every day. It's how do we go from the value that we know we can provide to our customers to the millions of dollars in sales that we want to bring into our companies? A very simple dilemma, but one that has seemed to have grown and grown over the years. As buyers have become more sophisticated about what they know through access on the internet, to the fact that they erected all kinds of walls to our getting to them. In fact, I remember recently hearing of a company had eliminated voicemail because they figured we don't want to get voicemail because we're not going to call anybody back anyhow to the fact that everything starts to look like a commodity to the buyer. And so for us, this dilemma has gotten enormous. Now, over the years, it really comes down to a basic thing about conversations in sales. That much has not changed. But what goes into those conversations? What should go into the conversation so we can eliminate that big gap between the value we have and the millions in sales we know we should be getting. Now for many years, for those of us who grew up with solution selling or consultative selling or any of that ilk, it came down to connecting the problems that the clients were having or the customers were having to the solutions that we could provide. And the way we got to that was asking good diagnostic questions that might be summed up with the old saw, what's keeping you up at night? Now, I never advocated using that exact question, but the essence of what that question was trying to get to was really what we were looking for in those conversations. It was our mindset. But recently, and I'm sure this experience is similar to what a lot of you are seeing, we've had people pushing back and saying, don't ask me that kind of question. Don't ask me what's keeping me up at night. Tell me what should be keeping me up at night. So a couple years ago, we wanted to find out, well, what should the conversation look like? How can more people succeed? In other words, what are the sales winners doing? And in our research, we talked to over 700 buyers and looked at the purchases they made and how they made those. And those buyers represented $3.1 billion in products and services. And in addition to that, we had over 300 conversations with buyers. And as we said, what we wanted to know is, what do sales winners do differently? What is it about the winners that put them in the winner circle more often than second place finishers? And through all the things that we looked at, we boiled it down to three simple steps that together would have the effect of getting you into the winner circle. So among the things we looked at, we wanted to know from buyers, thinking about their last purchases, what were the things that the winners did that the second place winners didn't do quite as often? And we came up with 42 attributes. And we took a look at those attributes and we asked the question, think about the last time you had to make a choice between two providers. What did those winners do? And what did the second place winners do? And what we saw, some, surprising some very surprising results. Now, in spite of the fact that there has been a big call that's saying, well, the whole idea of asking questions and finding out the connections and connecting your solution to the pain points and the dreams that your buyers had, we still found out of our 42, number five was understood my needs. And number seven was based on those needs, craft a compelling solution. That sounds a lot like solution sales. And we also found out that it was important, number four, 
was that the winners listened better and they connected with me personally. So this whole piece about relationships and connecting with the solution to the problems, that still was important. So as we looked at things, we said, you know, we shouldn't throw that out. We should not throw out the fact that it's important to still connect. So the first piece we looked at and the answer we saw is that winners connected. Winners connected both with the buyers as people, so they built the relationship and they understood, and they also connected the dots, connected the dots of what the buyers wanted, what the buyer was struggling with, and what the solution you could provide. So it wasn't just a case of coming in and saying, this is what you should do, but it was really listening to the pieces that were important. So connecting those dots made a difference. And so if you look at the common lens of solution sales, you saw pain plus diagnosis plus your offerings as a solution would get you to win. But we found that yes, that was important, that those pain points and diagnosis were important as a part of the process. But we also found that it wasn't just the pain point that is what we call afflictions and aspirations. So it's connecting to the dream of what was there. So that's the aspirations, the pain point that's there, but it's understanding the need. So it's the diagnosis while that is the foundation of it. It's showing how you connect the dots and truly understand the needs. But there was a problem. Where in the past we might have thought that was the way to the winner circle, what we discovered is it only got you in the game. It only allowed you to get to the plate, but didn't say you were going to win. There was more to it than that. So if the first part was being able to connect, we want to say what are the components, what are the, all the components that got to win? So connecting was just the first part. So what did they have to do next? What else was important in the process that the buyer said, we chose the winners because of these things? And what we found is you had to convince. Now think about what we normally do in convincing the presentations. We're trying to really accentuate why we are the people to choose. But what is it that you're trying to convince? And how do you go about that? Now think about what the buyer is facing. Even if they want to move ahead, what has changed? Well, I'm sure you've seen that there's a lot more buyers involved in the decision-making process. Why is that? Because there's a lot more that they have to deal with. And ever since the Great Recession, which, yes, it's seven years in our window, it still left scars on people. So as they looked at the things that you could provide, the value you could provide, and you may have connected with them personally, they still needed to be convinced to take that leap of faith. They needed to see that what you could provide would satisfy more than just that relationship piece because you had to reduce that chasm so they can make the leap to the value. And what is it they need to be convinced about? Well, the first thing is that you would provide maximum return. That by going with your solution, they would achieve maximum return, the ROI, however you want to do it. And that is what resonates with them. The second thing they had to see, though, is that you would minimize the risk, that they could feel assured that going ahead with what you provided as a solution would be the best solution for them. And so you had to substantiate it. You had to prove it more than you ever had. More buyers in the decision, more people to prove it to. And finally, why are you the best choice? So you had to differentiate. So in that convincing process, through stories, you had to be able to resonate, substantiate, and differentiate. So the second piece of the value equation is uncovered. But the third piece is something that perhaps was more surprising to us. While we all know that the relationships have changed and connection was important, and we realize about the convincing part. But what did the winners really do that stood out? And one of the things we discovered is that they collaborated with the buyer. So in the process of selling, they got on the same side of the table. 
they worked with the buyers to figure out what the best solution was. And in that process, in that process, they collaborated with the buyer. They talked about this is what you should be thinking about, but let's talk about how it will work for you. But what did they collaborate on? Even though they did it 2.8 times and they were 2.8 times more likely than the second place finishers to do this. What we also found is what the winners did is they educated the buyer with new ideas and perspectives. They brought something to the table. So if you go back to those conversations that we talked about at the beginning, where the buyers were saying, what should keep me up at night? That's what the buyers, the winners did. They did it three times more than the second place finishers. In fact, if we looked at the whole list of 42 attributes, this was number one, educated me with new ideas and perspectives. But not only was it number one, in the minds of the buyers, what the second place finishers did, that gap, it was 42nd out of 42 in what the buyers remembered the second place finishers doing. So as you look at what was possible, as you look at what was being done, the winners were standing out in the minds of the buyers substantially in a substantially different way. And so if you look at what the third component, the third step in this is collaborate. They collaborated in bringing new ideas to the table. They collaborated in working out the solution. And the way they were able to collaborate is because they also were able to connect and convince. Now if we look at the whole range of the top 10 of the third part of this, here's the three steps to get there, connect, convince, and collaborate. We see that educated me with new ideas or perspectives is indeed number one and collaborated with me number two. And we've looked at some of the others that are there on this list. But there's a whole list of the top 10 out of the 42 attributes that the winners demonstrated versus the second place finishers. Now I'm being kind in calling them the second place finishers because we all know in sales there are no trophies for coming in second or third or fourth. If you're second you are losing. And to be in the winner's circle more often these are the things you had to do. Now one last thing I want to point out here is that you see the overall value from the company is superior. Now there is that sense that you're demonstrating superior value, but when we asked about are the products and services more valuable, that was 28th. And for the second place finishers, it was 32nd. So there was not much of a difference between the two, but the overall value from the company is superior. So what does that mean? So as we look at this dilemma that we started off with, the dilemma of going from the value to sales, we see that the solution is driving ideas, driving change with ideas that matter. You're collaborating to move change, you're bringing the new ideas to, to the table to drive change, and you're helping convincing to move change. So in the end, it's a very simple process, very simple three steps. It's being able to connect like we always have, build those relations, convince them that we are the best choice and we can reduce their risk and maximize the value, but also collaborate with them in how we bring the ideas to the table and how we are going to work with them. So three very simple steps to becoming a sales winner, moving into that winner circle more often and not being relegated to second place, connect, convince, and collaborate. Now if there's more that you want to learn about how to become a sales winner, please visit our website and you can see our white papers and our ebooks and many, many other things in our blogs that will help you move into the winner circle by convincing, connecting, convincing, and collaborating.